hello everyone so in this video I well to be honest with you I have fluctuated slightly I can't think of a title for this video all about anxiety and myself so I've decided to call it how can we help you my name's Inwills and welcome to the in crowd Hello, yes, I have got dressed up just for you. It's a tie. So if you have liked this video or any of my videos, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel. And if you would like to be, um, provide a monetary um, donation, then please consider, oh, that way, please consider going across and becoming a patron. All your donations go directly back to my channel so I can continue making fantastic videos just like this one. Okay, here we go, one shot wonder. That's how I try to record these videos, one shot, um, straight through, no editing after all the fancy bits that you've just seen. Okay then, so I can't decide what to call this video. Initially, it was about going out on my first um, task for after visiting the clinical psychology, but a psychologist, hmm, but I kept changing the title about what I was writing, but uh, yes, I do write these. I actually script a lot of them. However, I've decided to call this, how can we help you? Uh, or how can you help me or us or anybody who's um, suffering from anxiety? So one thing which I am super positive about at the moment is that nowadays we are becoming more and more open about mental health and you know it's not something that we can um, hide away or should hide away people are becoming more open about it and a lot more tolerant and when I was suffering and yes I was clearly suffering there was still a great stigma connected to mental health and I said before in one of my videos that they actually tested me for a whole load of medical reasons until the comment by my GP was as a last resort let's send you to a clinical psychologist so a lot of people either back then didn't or maybe even now they didn't believe me or you or whoever you're watching and they thought that mental illness was something that you needed to be locked up for or even you were making it up or you were trying to get some kind of specialist treatment and really and truly it was not real at all things are changing which is very positive and it, that is really one of the reasons that I make these videos also working where I do I hope that it shows other people that in my because I the job I do that you know other people looking in can see me being open about mental illness open about anxiety and panic attacks and hopefully people will see that and be more accepting or understanding or both so how can you help people like me now if you are aware of someone and then what can you do to help them or help anybody in this situation right so I must say that the first thing I try to do is that I try to make excuses, um, especially if I'm going to be requested to go into uh, an anxious situation. So for example, I don't like, well, I get anxious about eating out. So I tend to use the vegan food excuse. Um, they have nothing for vegans. So you, you just go, don't mind, don't bother with me, I'm fine. Or, you know, I don't drink alcohol. So if people are going out for a pub drink or something, I say, oh no, sorry, it's not the place for me. Now, if that fails and if all you know if that fails then I try to gain control over the situation so if there's travel involved then I might decide to make my own arrangements or even decide to take my own car or or even book my own travel arrangements and of course I only this is prior to anything else so I, I if I can use an excuse to avoid it then I will do but if not I'll try to take more control over it now 
if all my excuses and the ability to take control has failed, then um, to be honest with you, I tend to try to avoid the situation either mentally or physically. So a lot of the time I do the classic head in the sand. I try not to think about it. I try to hope that it'll go away. I try to start to wish and hope that certain things will happen. And I just try to block it out. Um, but as it gets closer and closer and closer, then I get more and more anxious. Uh, the typical head in the sand is about envelopes. If you remember, envelopes coming through my door can actually make me, um, or, well, through the letterbox, can actually make me anxious. And I, tr I look at it and I think, I'm not going to open it. I'm not going to open it. I'm just going to leave it. And my brain is saying, if you don't engage with this, if you don't open it, then nothing bad can possibly happen. Okay then. So yeah, so these are all sort of like strategies I do. I, I, this is a waffling video. I'm not too sure where it's going at all. Um, but I think what I find very difficult to actually admit and to say to people is, sorry, I can't do that due to my anxiety. And even with more accepting people, I'm not sure that people would believe me or maybe they consider it a young person's illness or condition or maybe they'll just laugh at me or almost like go, what, really? You're kidding me. And then it almost like comes down to the reason they'll say to me, but why? And the answer to that is that I don't know. I think because my brain's wired differently. So anyway, I... <laughs> I, I do worry that if I talk about my mental illness too much and my anxiety and panic attacks that um, people will consider me unprofessional or um, my professionalism will be taken into account and I will be judged incorrectly. So before I can tell you how to help me, I think it's important for you to understand what it's like and I've talked about this before, but it's just waffling. I'm just waffling, I know. But I would like you to, to understand what it's actually like. So maybe you've got some conceptual framework or something to hook it onto. So to me, it's if you think about your worst possible nightmare ever, so the thing that you really dread doing or the thing that you have a phobia about and and if you don't have anything then well done you're completely lucky but that feeling that you get when you have to hold that spider or you see a snake or you have to go up on heights and um, that's what my anxiety feels like it's very real it's very powerful and even when I'm trying to get back into control, sometimes my anxiety can be so bad that all I want to do is curl up, preferably under a duvet and just hide in a hope that it will pass, um, pass away. So first things, um, I, if you know that I'm avoiding something, then I think the thing that really, I really appreciate is when um, some um, people say, and I'm just looking at my script now and I can't see where I've put it, but I'm just going to go off, off. I'm going to go off theme now, sorry. One of the things that I would um, say is it's a good idea to almost like give me an option. And some people might say, no, no, you shouldn't have the option, you should do it. But And I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. But what I would say is that myself or the person has to be ready for it. They have to be ready. There's no good just forcing it onto us. And one of the things I would say is that it's really reassuring for myself and maybe other people when people say things like we would really like you to do this but we understand if it's too much for you or you won't be able to make it and that that's really powerful for me because basically what people are saying is that we understand 
you know what it's like. We know that if you're not turning up, then it's not because you necessarily don't want to. It's because you're finding it very difficult. The the other thing that really helps me is it, somebody actually says to me, we would really like you to be there, but we understand if you can't manage it, then that almost like gives me a little bit of a push to do it because I know that they're aware of my situation. The, the other thing that I find really useful is when people say, I sort of like say, right, I'm going to try to do it. And they say, that's brilliant. That's really good. How can we help? You know, and that almost like gives me back some control and people will start to say, I mean, I can talk about different situations and I won't do it in this video. I'll do it in another video. But when people actually give me that opportunity to say, this is how I would like the situation to be, um, where I can sit, where I can stand, what I need to do. And that sort of like really, I think it's really powerful for me um, when I'm suffering because it almost like is somebody saying, look, we understand we're behind you. We're ready to support you. Just tell us what to do. And, and I think that's that's really powerful for me. And just like I was telling talking about before about phobias, I wouldn't suddenly um, throw a spider onto somebody who had arachnophobia. But if they wanted to overcome that phobia, I would be saying, Okay, then we're going through this reptile house or whatever, if you have uh, phobia about lizard. How can I help? How can I help you confront that? And I think that's what's really reassuring for anybody who has anxiety to almost like be put in control or the person to say, we understand that, come if you can. We would love you to come, but we understand if not. And then when I say, right, I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to try to do it. Then actually saying to me, okay then, so how can we help? And and that's really important. And starting up that discussion between two people. And so like say, well, I'll do this. If you see me do this, do this, do this, do this, so forth and so on. So I hope that, I'm not too sure what the message from this video is, to be honest with you. I feel that I've waffled on with a variety of topics, but I just wanted, well, I just wanted to say what I've said really. So I hope it's been beneficial to you. And I hope, you know, please don't, if you ever invite me to do something and I say, I can't do it, please do not take it personally. Please do not do that and be understanding and offer how you can help and remember other people's phobias sound silly to us if we have no phobia against it and anxiety I think is very similar to that unless you've actually experienced it then you don't fully understand what it's like so you know keep keep talking keep developing that understanding and that tolerance and that would be fantastic especially for me and maybe loads of other people so yeah i hope you've got something from this video and if not i'm sorry it was a bit of a waffle i know anyway i will see you next week on this channel and until then please 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 look after yourselves and stay positive and always ask how you can help Okay, see you all later, everyone. Bye.